Hi guys, my name is Naisha and welcome to Motherhood Made Simple. In today's video, I'm gonna do like a weekly meal prep. Um, this is a long chemo week for us. Andre has chemo four days this week. So what I like to do is I like to prep our breakfasts, lunches, and dinners for at least three days in advance because it just makes the week go a lot easier for us. So this week he has chemo on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the sessions can run anywhere from six to eight hours. And then um, where he's having his treatment is a hour and a half to two hour drive, depending on traffic. So it's like all day, you know, kind of thing. There's no way I could, you know, get up in the morning, make him breakfast, and then be able to get home in the evening and then cook a whole, you know, dinner. So what I like to do is just have things meal prepped and in the refrigerator so that way I'm just popping things in the microwave as opposed to cooking full course meals for the week so it just makes it easier. So I just decided to kind of show you guys what I'm going to do and I hope you enjoy the video and thank you for watching. Okay so before I start meal prepping I need to clean the table off. The kids just had McDonald's in the back. Um, normally I don't feed the McDonald's but now I'm in the mindset where you only live once, just, you know, kind of let them do what they want every now and again. So I'm gonna clean up the mess. I'm gonna put away all the groceries I just got from Walmart. Kind of see that right there. And then I'm just gonna start the meal prep. I'll show you the three things that I'm gonna make, um, the breakfast idea I have, how I prep our lunches for taking to the hospital with us. And then I'll show you how I freeze it and store it and all that stuff. Okay, so now that all the cleaning's done, the first thing we wanna do is make chicken and dumplings. So I have this family-sized can of cream of chicken here. I have a can of biscuits. That's gonna be my dumplings because I just really didn't feel like making them this time from scratch. I have a container of chicken broth, some carrots that I have cut up. I have two chicken breasts, some celery, um, three stalks of celery, a half of a white, large white onion, and some butter. So what you're gonna do is just in a pan, you let it get hot and then I'm just gonna add in my butter. And then once the butter starts to melt, I'm just gonna start adding everything in. Um, I like to saute all of the um, vegetables and the chicken in a frying pan first and then transfer it into a boiling pan. So that's why you see me doing it this way. I'm gonna add in the celery, which I just did here. Add in the onions. And then I'm gonna add in the carrots and then the chicken on top. So once everything is in your pan, you're just gonna give it a quick stir and then you're going to add in your seasonings. Now for this, I use this Tony Creole seasoning. I really like that one because it's spicy. I have some garlic powder, pepper, salt, and Italian seasoning. And I personally don't measure anything. I kind of do it to taste. So I'm just using a sprinkle of each one in there. And then once the chicken is cooked through, I'll give it a taste to see if I need to add more seasoning or not. But um, if you, I had to guess, I figure I would use about a half a teaspoon of each seasoning. So once you have all the seasonings in, you're gonna give it a quick stir again, and then I usually cover it with the lid and let it continue to cook for another 10 minutes or so. Just until the vegetables are a little bit soft, the chicken has browned a little bit, and um, you know everything's cooked really well together. Now because this um, frying pan is so small, I'm gonna transfer it into a big like stock pot now because I still have to add in the cream of chicken soup and the chicken broth and the dumplings and all of that obviously would not fit in the frying pan I have. So now I'm adding in the entire can of cream of chicken soup and I'm then gonna add in the entire, well I didn't do the entire, I did like three quarters of the container of the chicken broth and then once you add both of those in, you're gonna give it another stir and you're gonna let it simmer for about another 15 
15 to 20 minutes or so. You just want to make sure your vegetables are really soft. So like I said before, I just didn't have it in me to make homemade dumplings, even though they're super easy to make. I just, I didn't want to. So <laughs> I bought a can of biscuits that I am just going to cut up in fours and then I'm going to place them in the um, chicken and dumplings. You know, once it gets all bubbly and hot, then you want to slowly drop in your dumplings and um, then allow those to cook and absorb all the juices from the chicken and the vegetables and all that good stuff. And that usually takes about 20 minutes or so for them to cook all the way through. And then once that's done, your chicken and dumplings are pretty much set. And here you see I have a little helper with me in the kitchen now. It's my youngest son, Amir. Um, him and Andre both really love to help me in the kitchen. Whenever I'm cooking, they love to come in and help. And I do genuinely encourage that. Um, I love for them both to learn how to cook so that they can, you know, be able to make meals for themselves when they get older. So right here, he's just adding in the dumplings one at a time. We're going to give it a stir and then let it cook. Okay, the chicken and dumplings are done now. The dumplings cooked for about 20 minutes in the sauce, and then I just poured it into this container to serve to the boys. And then uh, when I serve it, I just put it in a bowl with a little bit of fresh parsley on top, and that's dinner. So the next thing I'm making is tacos, well, taco meat. Um, I like to make taco meat in bulk because if, well, number one, it freezes really well and two, my boys really like it. So for this, I just have a large thing of ground beef. I have some red onions, some bell peppers, taco seasoning, and salt and pepper. I think everyone knows how to make taco meat, but here we go. To a skillet, I'm just gonna add my red onions, my bell peppers, my ground beef, and that thing I had was a five pound um, container. I didn't use the whole thing for this. And then I'm also going to add in my taco seasoning and a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to allow this to brown, drain the meat, and then our taco meat is done. Okay, so now that our taco meat is done, I'm going to put what we're going to have for dinner tomorrow in the plastic container. And what I want to freeze, I'm going to put in the glass bowl. And when it completely cools, I'm just going to put it in a freezer bag. And then I want to store it in the freezer to have for next week. So when I want to use it next week, all I do is take it out of the freezer, sit it in the sink, let it defrost. And then once it does, I'll just heat it up in the skillet. And then to freshen it up a little bit, I'll add a little salsa to it. And then we'll use that taco meat for nachos or something like that next week. Now that container ground beef was huge, so I was able to make two separate servings of taco meat. And then with the remainder part of it I had, I just decided to make um, meatballs. I just seasoned it with salt and pepper, seasoned salt, um, garlic powder, onion powder, and then formed them in little um, meatballs. And then what I'm going to do is just put them on parchment paper, flash freeze them, and when they get frozen solid, I'm going to transfer them into a freezer bag. And then I will use them at some point either... Next week, well this week or next week, I'll use them. Um, I'll make like meatballs with brown gravy or spaghetti and meatballs or I'll make Swedish meatballs, but I'll have them already prepared and frozen so that way they're easier to make a quick meal this week. The last thing I'm making for the week to get us all prepared, I'm making little bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits. So I have Amir helping me here. He's placing the biscuits out on the baking dish, and then he's going to put the turkey bacon on another dish, and then we're just going to pop it into the oven to cook for about 15 or 20 minutes. And I did help him in here. I wanted to make sure that he was careful putting the items in the oven so he didn't burn himself. I'm just scrambling some eggs. This is pretty self-explanatory. Just gonna scramble them in the frying pan with some butter. And then when they're almost done, I'm just gonna add them, add some cheese on top and then remove them from the heat.
now it's time to assemble. I'm just gonna take the biscuits. Now, I didn't realize these biscuits were so small. They're like little mini, tiny, whiny biscuits. I, I, mm, I don't know. I just made a mistake when I picked up the wrong ones. So I'm just gonna assemble the biscuits one at a time. You know, you just take a small spoon, put the egg on the bottom, top it with some bacon, put the top back on it. Once I get these all assembled, then I'm just gonna wrap them in parchment paper, which is very important. You wanna wrap them in parchment paper because when you heat them up in the microwave, it's gonna keep the biscuits really soft. They're not gonna get all dried out and hard. So you definitely wanna do that. Wrap in parchment paper first, then in aluminum foil, and then you can go ahead and put them in the freezer. All right, you guys, that is it. I am done meal prepping for the week. I just did everything I'm gonna do. Now the last thing I have to do is just get this kitchen cleaned up and wash all the dishes that I made. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I enjoyed making it. Thank you so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. Leave any questions or comments you have below and I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye, you guys.